And please for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Overview of public comment procedures. It's important board of education meetings are structured and efficient so to allow the board to properly address the set agenda items in a civil and respectful manner. While New York State law does not require boards of education to have a public comment period, this board of education finds civil and respectful public input to be valuable and important. To promote this, the following structures have been put in place related to the public input portion of the agenda. First, public input will be at the end of the agenda. This allows the board to address all agenda items in a timely manner and does not discourage or unduly delay members of the public who are attending relating to the related to the agenda items if the meeting agenda is significantly delayed due to individuals speaking to the board about non-agenda items. Second, we will set a total time limit of 30 minutes for public input with 20 minutes dedicated to agenda items and 10 minutes to non-agenda items. Each speaker will be limited to three minutes. A request to make public comment sheet for those wishing to participate in public comment is located on the table upon walking into the meeting and when completed, given to the board clerk. Additionally, you may contact the board clerk at 315-697-2025 to sign up for public comment in advance. Concerns about individual students or staff are not to be made at public comment. If you have such concerns, the board clerk or superintendent will provide you with how and to whom you should share your concerns. If a member of the public wishes to address the board, but the time allotment expires for public input, the person may write to the board by sending any comments to the board clerk or they may sign up to speak at the next regularly scheduled board meeting. Finally, the Board of Education will listen to public comment, but not immediately respond to the speaker. This is so the board has time to fully review any questions or claims and respond as appropriate. Thank you. Um, routine matters, board minutes of March 26, 2024, the Treasurer's Report of February 2024, and the CSE recommendations from February through um, April 9th. May I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Staff recognition. Who do you want to start with? All right. Um, so continuing with our, our uh, tradition that uh, in the last several months of recognizing outstanding staff members, um, I will say, Pat's laughing at me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're outstanding, Pat. Don't be, don't be humble. He's in seven uh, right now. <laughs> <laughs> so th this really is has been a, a, a nice thing for us to take a step back and, and uh, recognize people who really represent the district uh, in an outstanding way. Uh, we're recognizing three individuals tonight, and I'm going to let other people talk um, more specifically about them, but um, three outstanding people who, when you, when you think of who are, who are people who are great representatives of Canastota schools, right? People who work hard, have a great attitude, come to work with a smile on their face, will do whatever needs to be done to make sure that the kids are, are treated well and taken care of and are in a safe environment and a good place. Um, those are the, the, that really is, um, applies to all three people who we're going to be talking about tonight. So uh, I would say on behalf of the board, personally would like to thank um, Pat, uh, Tim, and Tammy for everything that they do every day. And um, we want to recognize you not only with certificates, but I think there's some other people who want to say some things um, about you. So um, I don't know if, who wants to go first. Um, I'll let you guys we'll decide. We'll <laughs> 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 
Uh, Jenny and I are both going to present. I don't know where we should stand for the thing. So, the Tim and Pat. Pat and Tim. <laughs> Which one came first, like the chicken or the egg, right? So, I had to reach out to Mr. Campbell to find out where, uh, you know, where and when they both started. Um, and, you know, it really doesn't matter because when I think anybody thinks of one, they just automatically think of the other because they're like peanut butter and jelly. They, they go together so nice and they're always around for us. Uh, so Mr. Campbell has shared that he started working with us in the district in 2018, right, in our maintenance department. And Pat has been with us since 2003 as a sub in maintenance. Well, I started out as a tennis coach. Oh. <laughs> Wow, I did not know that. Okay. Uh, so, it's, it's my recollection of the first time that I met Pat was back when I first started in 2019. Came in, I was then at that time in Liz Garofalo's old classroom, and uh, he had come in, he was changing out light bulbs, and we just got talking, and he says, Oh, yeah, you know, I'm just a sub here. It seems like they needed some help, so. <laughs> That was four years ago, but now as I look, that was from 2003. Have you just been on our sub list this yes. whole time? Yep. So apparently we need a lot of help in, in Canasota, and, and Pat has been there to help us out, right? Um, so we, as a collective, kind of asked some staff throughout the district what things came to mind when they thought of Tim and or Pat, and these are some of the things that they said. Dependable, talented, always smiling, always willing to help, they care about our schools, they have a good sense of humor, um, and then specifically from Peterborough Street, they're just problem solvers, they're hardworking, they're great listeners. Pat is a great storyteller, and Tim just nods along. Right? <laughs> smile. Um, they never get stressed out. They're always reliable and there when we need them and friendly and they just every day, um, which is why you're here and we're recognizing you, is that you just go above and beyond. So we're so appreciative of that. Thank you. Thank you. And some friends at Peterborough um, also wanted to share. Um, when I first met Pat, he was my track coach, and his kindness and supportiveness left a lasting impression on me. Now I find myself back in the district working, and I see that he hasn't changed a bit. He's still the same kind and supportive person I remember. His presence truly makes this district such a warm and inviting environment. Um, best dollhouse makers ever was another comment from Peterborough Street. So we know you do a lot of things for us that you probably couldn't imagine, but especially at Peterborough Street, I think there's some special tasks with you know, furniture and um, equipment and such. Um, these wonderful men always have a smile on their faces when they come on through to help us and our building needs. Tim replaced some light bulbs that I noticed needed replacing and some that I hadn't noticed too. Um, Tim is very particular about things, so we appreciate that and his attention to um, they're always available when I need something. I've needed some things to put up in my office and things fixed in the gym. They're very quick to help. Pat also came to my rescue with my windshield wiper one snowy day, too. So. <laughs> um, they're both willing to help with the drop of a hat, and they never feel, um, make you feel like you're asking too much of them. They're always considerate and truly care, uh, not only about building issues, but they always take the time to check in with people, too. Uh, service with a smile is probably my favorite quote, and I couldn't agree more. But they always have a heart smil heartfelt smile um, when we see them. They're competent, creative, and independent. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. Thank you. And I, I get to, I'm very excited every day I pull in that they're there. At Southside, when I pull in, because I know I'm going to get to start my day off with a smile and a laugh. So, it's a great comforting feeling. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. <coughs> Do you want to give a speech before your picture? Or? No, I'm the peanut butter, by the way. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I think I'm the peanut butter. Yeah. If I had that list, I could tell you that I'm the one that's, I'm Tonto. This is the Lone Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> so take a picture, I guess, with us and not get the board.
that I would describe um, to Tammy. Because again, as a parent, you only get to meet so much. But when you're actually working with the individual, you're really um, just mired by all the things that somebody can bring to the table. You know. So I just I, I wrote down a few things. And I think the first and foremost that stands out to me is her work ethic. Absolutely outstanding. I'm getting, you know, I'll get here you know, relatively early. Uh, as I'm heading into the building, who's there in the freezer usually at 6.45 in the morning? That would be Tammy, you know? And so, and a lot of times, like in the winter, it was cold, so I tried not to say anything, so I could just keep going and just go. Okay. Right. But on the nice days, Tammy, do you need anything? You know, keep walking. That was cold based on that. Let her go. No, you keep walking. So, um, but... Again, not only, you know, from there, she's bringing in boxes and this, you know, on the cards and just getting ready for the day. And uh, I can really appreciate, you probably don't know this, but when I was in the, in the service, I actually worked in the kitchen, uh, KP duty and so forth. And so I can really appreciate some of the surroundings and the complexity of working in the cafeteria and how difficult it is. So. Tammy makes it look real easy, but I got to tell you, I've been in there when there are just things are flying, not literally, <laughs> flying all over the place, right? And because it is, they only have a certain time frame to get a hot meal out to those students each and every day, whether it be breakfast, whether it be lunch. Tammy, you are absolutely not only adored by us as uh, administrators, teachers, but also your coworkers. Thank you. I mean, the relationship we, that she has with the people in the cafeteria is absolutely outstanding. And you can just tell by the body language, by the way they respond uh, to Tammy, it's absolutely, absolutely incredible to, uh, to, to be a part of that. And talk about a team player. I will go to Tammy at the last second. I'm, I'm in a pinch and say, and say, could we get coffee or could we get? Absolutely. You know, well, just tell me when, what time, and we'll make it happen. And so, um, it's actually just been an absolute uh, blessing to uh, have worked with you, you know, in this capacity, as opposed to just knowing you as mom. <laughs> so, yes, thank you. Uh, and the last thing I would say is. You know, everything is about the kids. So if there is a kiddo out there that is, um, let's just say, um, didn't bring their lunch, or you know, a, a, a circumstance like that, not only do I know, because Tammy brings it to my attention, but then we, she makes sure that that student is fed. You know, mm -hmm. she'll actually survey the cafeteria just to make sure kids are eating. Uh, you know, and uh, and they're 
you know, they're, they're being cared for. And so for that, I mean, we're ever grateful for your service. Thank you. Yeah. And I just wanted to say, um, too, just an advocate for the students at Robert Street. Knowing each and every one, knowing those students that are going through her lines, coming to us on multiple occasions saying, you know, did you know that he, would, he might have been stealing? You know, she, she wants us to know the inside scoops. She knows the students that are really <laughs> Derek took another ice cream. <laughs> and, and I, and isn't it, isn't it a delight when you work with someone who's happy? I mean, yes. out, I, I too saw in this in the winter, freezing cold days, hi Tammy, coming into work, coming out of that freezer <laughs> with a smile in crates of stuff. Um, and you kept just, walking too. <laughs> <laughs> but just your advocacy and your hard work is, you know, there's really hardly words, more words to say. But I do want to say, um, again, drop you know, short notice to make things happen. We had our ELA test, and Derek had an idea about snacks <laughs> for students. <laughs> but, you know, right away, no problem. Yeah. Snacks, juice, it was all set and done, and just can't thank, thank you, you enough yeah. for thank all you. that you do. Thanks. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you very thank much. You. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. No. Picture. Yeah. Picture. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. One more. One more. We're going to get a picture of the board. Oh. both buildings and grounds as well as to the cafeteria because without you all I don't know where a school wouldn't operate so I thank you um, senior trip presentation Stacy and Jen if you wouldn't mind can I present it oh that would be wonderful <laughs> okay would you like me to stand up or sit what would you prefer? whatever you prefer yeah okay Avery's our president so she decided to stay <laughs> So the senior class is looking to go to Six Flags again, the same trip that was done last year. And it would be from May 31st to June 1st. The trip would be, yeah, so day one we'd be at the water park, it's an indoor water park. And then day two would also be the water park and there's like go-karting and um, mini golfing, roller skating, and it would be from a Friday to a Saturday. And then as of right now, we have 15 deposits done, but we haven't advertised it enough just because we want to get it approved before we advertise it to all the students. Um, and we're hoping it's no more than $200 per student. And then we also have fundraising options. We're looking to do like a purse raffle maybe. That way we can bring the cost down for those who might not be able to get that money in. You'd be letting me know about that purse yeah, raffle. Yeah, I'm going to take that one too. <laughs> How many kids are in your class, Avery? We have 73, 74. Yeah. So how how many kids do you hope are going to be able to, I mean, will so go? We're hoping at least half. So we think if we get half the students, it'll be 200 per kid. Well, again, I would, I, personally, I would push for, you know, as many, as many, many as possible. Yeah. Because it's memories that you won't forget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so once it gets approved, we'll send an email out and make sure everyone gets the information. Anybody else want to ask? You got my question. No. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank
Thank you. Thank you. Do we have to vote on that? Is that on here? Uh, it is on there. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Reconfiguration update? A few? Yeah, so just an update. Um, as you know, uh, on the heels of our last uh, board meeting where we gave an overview of the concept of reconfiguring the district and, and um, the various grade level movements. Um, we've had a lot of, uh, of uh, informational sessions that were designed to really be conversational. We knew that people wanted to, uh, people were curious about, um, you know, the potential benefits and what would look different or, you know, what should we anticipate um, that would, um, um, you know, that would be of interest to people. So we've had six, since the last board meeting, we've had six um, sessions where uh, morning, afternoon, evening, sort of a mix, different days of the week, times of the day. Um, some sessions uh, with more people than others. We knew that that was going to be the way it was. Some, you know, some uh, sessions were more uh, convenient for people. Um, but the, I, I want to really take the opportunity to thank people who participated. Uh, very positive, productive conversations. Good questions. Good. Um, good uh, dialogue back and forth. Um, we will continue to take those types of comments and, and that feedback, feedback uh, that's going to help us moving forward. Um, but I will say, I guess the summary of this was um, it, there were positive, I think, overall positive feelings about the concept of reconfiguration. Um, the um, over the uh, PowerPoint that we'd used uh, several weeks ago, we had copies of that. We still have copies of that available for people um, to review. Um, still invite people to come in and have, uh, if they weren't able to attend any of those six sessions that already have been scheduled, uh, we'd be happy to meet them. And actually, in several cases, have accommodated people's request for a meeting. Uh, so if people want to come in, We'll find uh, a, a time that works for you, and um, and we can discuss um, anything related, really, to to uh, to the idea of reconfiguration. I think the other thing that we realized was there are a lot of spin-off conversations to the concept of reconfiguration. Right? Initially, people are thinking, okay, it, it, we're talking about okay, this grade's moving here, and that grade's moving there. That's the obvious. Um, but a lot of the time that we spent was really about um, how do we make our schools the best they can be? What are some of the ways, um, whether it's through reconfiguration or even beyond that, or separate totally from reconfiguration, how can we be the best school we can be, have high expectations for everybody involved? So um, again, I think it was positive, I, I think overwhelmingly. Uh, the feedback has been positive, around, uh, but certainly there are unknowns, and we understand that. So I think as we move forward, we want to continue to carve out opportunities to assess how are we um, in in uh, moving along in the process, and um, let's project forward. Let's say this is something that um, that does um, eventually. Um, <coughs> happen in the district, we want to continue to look at how do we evaluate it, how do we make sure that we're doing everything we can to be the best we can be. So this is really going to be, this is a work in progress. Um, we're obviously going to be coming back with more specific information and talking about timelines and dates and things like that as we move forward. Um, but we wanted to have the opportunity on the heels of our public presentation to get these uh, sessions, uh, allow for feedback. Um, to be reflected in some of the question and answer documents that we've been putting out. Um, on the website, we have a question and answer document with some of the most frequently asked questions. Uh, I would also remind people that in that handout, that again, they can, they can you know, um, grab a hard copy or they can watch the, the initial uh, presentation, uh, which is still available on our website. 
But included in that are some references like um, the American Middle Level Association website, which is loaded with resources about um, what, for example, middle level education um, is all about and the potential benefits for um, having a middle school model in schools. Um, so please reference that. Um, and again, that's noted in, in um, right in our PowerPoint where you can find that additional information. Uh, we also, just a couple other highlights. I think there was overwhelmingly positive uh, feedback about the later transitions out of both Peterborough and um, Southside. Um, so again, those are just some of the highlights. Obviously, it's a big, uh, a big area of uh, a lot of topics within that. Um, please ask questions um, and um, you know, give me a call. Send me an email if you want to set up another time to have a conversation about any of these these topics. Um, but um, very pleased and, and get thankful, grateful for the for the comments, um, conversations we've had, and um, again a lot of things that were beyond just the idea of reconfiguration, but just very positive themes of how we can make the school uh, the best it can be. So very positive process. So we'll continue to update. Is uh, as we move forward. Thank you, Tracy. Budget. Yes. All right. I believe, and I will click. Um, the superintendent is going to do the first couple slides here. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I get a call. Have a good night. I know. I'll go get it. Both click it whenever your heart tells you to. All right. Well, we're figuring out the clicker with our instead of talking. Okay. Is that one? Click. 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 Budget, and obviously we're going to be talking about numbers and some of the things that people are always very interested in talking about. Like, what are the most common questions we have? What, what are, what is this budget going to do to my taxes? Right? Um, what's the the increase in the in the uh, tax levy? Um, it, are people's jobs secure? You know, or do I need to be worried that I don't get those? Those are the common things. So. Um, what we're talking about is always a balance. We're looking at how do we balance um, having a good program, really the best program we can that we can have for our students, and how do we maintain res uh, responsible practice uh, and stewardship to the taxpayers. So that's the balance. It's always the focus of you know how can we how can we make good decisions for kids and and uh, and stay in, in good financial shape. Some of the things that are uh, that Tracy's going to talk about, um, it makes for an interesting time because I'll, I'll say in the last several years, we've probably coming off of one of the best times in the last few decades um, when it comes to funding in, in public education in New York State. Um, it's interesting now in that now you're seeing, you're going to see a lot of different things. You can see things in the news and the media because there are going to be wide variations in, in how districts are approaching their budget. What are the factors that have come into play. Well, falling away of the federal funding, which we're going to talk about over the last several years, is a, is a significant factor. Um, there are things that are changing in, in the state currently that we're going to have to continue to address. We know that there's going to be a diminished, not only the federal funds uh, falling away, but we also know that significant in increases, for example, like we experienced in foundation aid last year, 
those days are probably long gone. We're not going to have significant increases based on um, what is a pretty uncertain state budget picture at this point. We are hearing earlier the governor's announced that there's a, a conceptual framework for an agreement for the budget, but we don't have details unless something came out in the last couple of hours and, and we were unaware. Um, we don't have specifics. We don't have new aid runs, for example. And so there's still a great deal of uncertainty because um, we're now a couple of weeks late on finalizing the state budget and the aid um, that's associated with it. So I always like to talk about what are the things that really frame the decision making of the district, how we spend our, our, um, our um, resources. So it starts with our uh, instructional program, um, our innovative program, safety, those sorts of things. So just to highlight, again, some of the things that have framed budget conversations as we get to this point. Does it work? <laughs> uh, let me go back. Uh, some of the things that are, that are important, obviously we've talked a lot about K-12 and consistency. And you're going to continue to hear a lot about uh, how can we have consistent best practice. Well, a lot of that um, consistency comes from people internally in our district being able to talk together, plan together, uh, talk about what good quality instruction looks like. So the budget really uh, you know, takes that into account to be able to continue some of the good uh, K-12 committee work that has been started. Uh, a continued focus on data. We can't just go by a gut feeling. We have to do things uh, based on research-based practice and using data to inform our decision making. To do that, um, we have to incorporate in numerous places in our budget. Um, we have to account for that. It doesn't just happen. Intervention is huge. How do we help students to, to maximize their potential? Um, so we have to be very intentional about the way that we approach that. That doesn't just happen magically. There's a method to, in the, to the madness of how we approach that, how we uh, identify um, the skills and, and competencies that students need assistance on. And so that is a continued K-12 fo focus moving forward. You'll notice a lot of the things we talk about, they're not wildly different than the things we talked about last, in last year's budget cycle. It's the evolution of the idea of how, of how we address these, these, um, these main pieces of our approach to quality schools. So while on this side of, of the screen, those are foundational pieces, right? When we're talking about our core instructional practice, consistent research-based practice and instruction, having aligned curriculum. You know, for example, there's a you know, we're looking at a new K-6 social studies curriculum that was a product of teachers and administrators getting together and identifying the fact that there was a need there, that we needed some type of curriculum that was going to address the standards that are in the state, bringing some level of consistency to that. So that is now moving forward. And this budget will support that type of work. So foundational on this side of the screen. Um, on the right side of the screen, we also like the idea of still doing things that make us unique and different and excite kids so that maybe they're more willing to buy into this side of, of the screen, the foundational piece. They, one side complements the other. So things like have, still supporting CTE programming, for example, which we're the host site now of several uh, that have started to grow over the last couple of years, so we're proud of that. Um, the good work that uh, Liz Garofalo and, and a lot of our staff members continue along with the help of involved community members with badging and credentialing. Again, that's the wave of the future. That's the language of colleges and businesses. How do we break learning into smaller pieces, more flexible pieces, um, stackable, so that you can be more reactive to what kids are interested in and what businesses and organizations say are important and where does that, where does that all intersect? Um, we're, we've this past year had some opportunities to have kids go off-site, um, for example, with some uh, partnerships with MACNI, Manufacturers Association of Central New York, where kids um, are able to actually go into businesses 
and learn about the business, see it up close. It's a different, it's another layer of connection to the real world to what's going on. And then things like our esports program, which again I would say probably the largest response we've got to any of the recent pro programs in recent years when we had an informational night uh, regarding esports. Esports is just a the tip of the iceberg, people. I think that means we're playing video, those kids are playing video games. It is a $200 billion a year industry. It is bigger, a bigger revenue generating industry than the music and movie industry combined. So when people say, why are you having kids involved with esports and gaming? It's because that's what they're doing. That's what the world is doing. There's a ton of jobs associated with that. And the people that we're working with on this project they're really helping us to make that connection between employability skills, pathways into careers that are directly tied to things like eSports. So we're looking forward to seeing the growth of that program. So again, balance between core foundational um, instruction and things that make us different and unique. Um, huge areas that uh, of, of um, and priorities for the district. Physical safety, right? And the mental health and uh, SEL support. So what does that look like? What are the things that are included in this um, this year's budget as we move forward? <coughs> Continuation of connected community schools, which has been a huge, huge benefit over the last couple of years. Um, actually have some uh, data that I can, uh, I'll share actually in my report, yeah. As far as the, um, the sheer volume of resources that are being pushed out in the community through their association with community schools, the numbers are sort of mind boggling, so I'll share those in a little bit. Um, our Parent Advisory Council, which has taken twists and turns over, over the last couple of years, but some great things, including our eSports uh, program, have come from that. Things like training and certification for mental health first aid for parents sessions, which we just had a conversation earlier, bringing that uh, training opportunity back for people who are interested in learning more about tools that can, where they can help their, their child. Um, and while well, it's been a while coming, uh, it's coming, and it's um, going to certainly be here as we open the doors for next year, our, our satellite mental health office on-site uh, clinic that will be housed right here um, through a partnership with Madison County. Um, so that introduction of, uh, of that um, is uh, supported in this budget. As well as enhanced levels of security uh, through partnership again with uh, Madison County and with the Sheriff's Office, we will have uh, two, this budget calls for having uh, two uh, trained um, school uh, officers in the, in the district next year. So what does that look like? We're still developing you know, their, their schedule and uh, you know, in all the details since it's only April. But I can tell you, not only will they be highly visible um, and around the district, um, certainly at the high volume times, pick up the drop off at their lunches, but a huge component of the county program is going to be um, really working with staff members, working with students, um, so that we're doing a lot of preventative work. We're not just reacting to things that happen in the school, we're doing a lot of stuff to make sure that things don't happen um, in, a, in a negative way to, to begin with. So we're really excited about, about uh, those improvements and enhancements in those areas. And so I'm going to... Slide four. One more. Okay. Oh, okay. Slide four. I'm going to blame the clicker. So, um, and this is something we, we just were, had been uh, talking about. Obviously a piece of this, of the budget is, uh, is designed to support um, the district reconfiguration um, that we talked about. And the academic, some of the other uh, priorities um, that have been in place in some cases over time, um, some have shifted, for example, um, 
maintaining appropriate class size. That's been an a ongoing, repeated, year after year, um, for a number of years, priority of the district, that we have um, classes that are conducive to learning. So that continues. There is no uh, shift in that philosophy. Um, the class sizes are going to be uh, in line with what we've seen historically. Um, early intervention, and I know this is going to come up in other pieces of the budget. One of the things, as we talked about at the recent board meeting, status of the pre-K program, for example. Well, um, the decision was to uh, roll forward with a program consistent with what we have this current year. And I know Tracy's going to talk a little more about that, but that's included in this budget. Also, maintaining the college credits, the college level courses that have led to some kids being able to get um, the equivalent of uh, a year of college credit, in some cases more. Uh, there, are, there are approximately 20 college level courses that are available to students, and that's here at this point. There's obviously other courses through uh, BOCES programs off site that are available. It's a pretty big number um, for, for a school of our size. Um, and if you add that up, it's in the neighborhood, for example, of 60 credit. That's basically a, an associate's degree level of, of uh, credit that kids can accumulate. So um, those things are all continuing and moving forward. Will we ever look at not offering a college course? Yes. Will we not offer a particular program? Yes. It's based on need. Where we, the changes, the choices that we're making are based on is there a need. We are not going to, as we're analyzing the full budget, we're not cutting positions, programs, based on a, a, a need to slash the budget. It's not where we are. We will make sound financial decisions if, for example, we have classes in single digits, right? Well, every this district is making that decision. You know, we have to look at what's reasonable financially. So we can't be running classes with four or five kids in it. Okay? It's a reasonable expectation. If there are interest in certain programs, well, we're not going to just maintain programs that don't have adequate interest. So we want to be very clear when we talk about what is or isn't remaining in the budget. What we're doing is going to be framed by interest, need, demand. Okay, while maintaining a similar size, for example, we're just looking at class sizes, maintaining similar uh, class sizes that with uh, that we have in the district. And that should be A9. So, um, obviously, the configuration was K2, 3, 4, 5, 8, and 9, 12. That one. So I'm going to turn it over to Tracy and we'll get into some of the numbers. Yes, thank you. Um, so Sean has, has talked about the academic program, um, the district level initiatives, not only tonight, but, but tonight highlighted several of those things, but certainly over the last several months. Um, I'm going to dive into the numbers. The uh, finance committee that's sitting here, we have been doing this for several months now, but this is the full opportunity, the first opportunity for the full board to see the numbers at this level. Um, so first I always like to start talking about the budget development process and what that looks like um, and some of the factors. Certainly this year, again, um, today is the 16th of April. We don't have a state budget. There has been back and forth information over the last couple days. There is a budget, there isn't a budget. Um, we don't have new runs. What we are building, what a board approves is the appropriation budget. You'll see the revenue budget that is going to support that. But that revenue budget, as we look at it, is anticipating a 3% increase in foundation aid. That's what we're hearing. So this is not locked in. The revenue budget is not locked in. What the board is going to approve tonight going forward is the appropriation budget that goes to the voters 
and the levy increase. The other pieces of the revenue may not look like what it looks like on this screen. Um, and, and we should hopefully in the next week solidify some of that information. Um, I do want to point out, because this, is, this was interesting last year, it was the first time since 2009 that school districts were fully funded. So just let that sink in for a minute. First time since 2009 we were fully funded in 2023. Fast forward a year, what was on the table at the budget planning, the budget process in Albany, whole part was being removed. So one year after schools are fully funded, the governor puts a proposal out to take away full harmless. Over 70% of school districts stood to lose money. Now, at this point, what we know, what we have read, what we have gotten from Albany is that the governor has taken a step back, put that on pause, and is going to roll that out again next year. That has not gone away. That will be coming back. But for our purposes, that piece um, is on hold and what we're getting from uh, information we're getting from our state liaisons is that you know 3% on foundation aid is probably reasonable. That would be the best. And uh, we'll, we'll look at that further. Um, as we built this out, the tax levy limit does stay within the 2.3% percent increase you all seen that calculation um, and approved the tax levy limit a few meetings ago um, and again just a reminder as we're moving forward and we're talking about dollars and we're talking about um, where our resources go September of 2024 any remaining federal monies that schools have will expire so the COVID money, the pandemic money, the learning loss money, the YESA money, the HERSA money, all that money, uh, the portion started to expire in 23, and the remaining monies will expire in 24 of September. So I always like to just start with what is the budget? It is a one-year financial plan. While we certainly look at long-term planning, the budget that is built here, the dollars that we're talking about, both on the expenditure and on the revenue side, are for one year. Okay. Um, <clears throat> revenues and expenses in a school district budget must agree. So uh, we'll look at what happens if your expenses are more than your anticipated revenues. How do you balance that budget? Where do you get those additional funds? What does that look like? What is part of that long-range planning? Um, again, uh, expenses in the budget meet the needs of the student, build for the future, continuity, stability. That's, that, that's what this budget um, continues to do. Again, Mr. Basetta talked about the items that um, are included and highlighted several of those and reviewing and realigning and reallocating our just a process of budget every single year. The budget that we're in, the budget that we're building, and the future budget that we're already thinking about. This process starts a year in advance. Again, while we're rolling this budget out, we're already thinking about next year's budget. <coughs> Um, things that will be happening, reviewing current initiatives, new initiatives, old initiatives, planning and input from those very important committees that builds some of these budget pieces. Um, that information comes together. Oftentimes I will sit and I just listen as to what's happening because I know somewhere along the line that's going to come back and Tracy needs to find some money to support some of those things. Um, so input from stakeholders, through the principals, through the department chairs, through building leader reps, the finance committee, again, begins meeting in December and meets straight on through April, um, late May, early April, um, we're late April, early May, that's backwards. Um, uh, we're ready to roll out the budget to the full board, at which time, um, hopefully, the board will, will do their approval to move this forward. 
So I am going to present this in the required presentation format, kind of is um, the, the precursor to the meeting that will occur, which is called the required budget hearing that happens in May. So this information is presented in the three-part format, and we'll talk about those uh, formats, the program, the capital, and the administrative components of the budget, take a look at last year's numbers, this year's numbers, talk about some of the changes um, on the expense end, and then look at the revenue piece. So we'll start with a summary. Again, down the left-hand column are the three components. These are the required components to be presented. Program, capital and administration, you can see across um, the columns. And then I'm just gonna jump down because we're gonna dive in a little bit, but we're gonna look at the total budget for the current year that we're in at 36,668, and then the proposed budget for next year, 38,132,742. 3.99% increase on expenditures. So I always like to take a look um, at the pictorial of this. What, what does that represent? What do these categories represent when we're looking at the total budget? 72.7% of the budget is made up of program expenditures, while 17% of the budget is made up of capital expenditures, and 10.3% is made up of administrative expenses. So what is in each of these categories? <coughs> the program budget encompasses all of our instructional, academic, student-based pieces. Regular instruction, special education, alt ed, op ed, tech, library, guidance, social workers, nurses, SEL, athletics, co-curricular, BOCES, and transportation. Pupil transportation is included in the program budget, along with all of the related employee benefits. This section of the budget totals out at $27,789, um, about a 4.8% increase over last year. So we'll, we'll dive into some of the categories here, um, and we can take a quick look as we go across and what the changes are. Um, in, in some of these line items, again, um, these pieces of the budget detail have been seen multiple times by the Finance Committee um, in, in much greater depth. Um, but we'll see here regular, uh, regular teaching, which encompasses a large number of uh, budget codes in our expenditure report. Um, up about 487. Special education under the second line, down about 128. Um, this is not that we don't have need or that we've had big changes. Again, this, that was really particular to realigning some of the budget, um, the budget items and looking at some contracts and um, really kind of honing in on some of the various pieces there as we're looking at that program in total. Media and computer services up about 48,000. Pupil services, uh, this is guidance and health, about 25,000. Athletics and co-curricular up about 66,000. In service, <coughs> um, in service slash PD and um, uh, curricular development, the um, increase there about 111 again supported in this budget and, and we heard um, the superintendent talk about over the last couple of years aligning curriculum and putting those pieces out on the floor. In this district now, it will be math, ELA, um, which have, have been done and are continued to be supportive with the products that we need to uh, meet the needs of the K-12 population. This year has been science, some of you have um, been in, intricate in that either the investigations, the curriculum, the science kits to meet the new standards that is supported going forward and then moving into next year will be the social studies piece. There are annual long-term costs to any of those curriculum pieces, again, included um, in the budget that is being presented to you. 
interfund transfer up about $175,000. We've had some discussion about this, um, certainly at the finance committee table, but we've had discussion here also. That is the local share of our pre-K program. Again, um, there are two pieces to that. There is the um, administrative piece, which runs through BOCES and has a portion of that aided back to us. And then there's the program piece, which we drive some state and federal monies uh, under grant. And then there's the local share. Transportation up about 59,000 and employee benefits um, up about 425. And this is a model based on um, salary. So it's uh, your salary in each category. Uh, divided by the entire district, uh, the entire district salary, and what is included in there. It's TRS cost, ERS cost, dental, health, social security, workers' comp, all of those benefit-related items. So again, um, up about 1.2, close to 1.3 million um, in this in the program budget. Capital portion of the budget is our operations and maintenance of all of our facilities, it includes all of the staff, all of the employee benefits, debt service, and the capital outlay. So in this district, we historically run a capital outlay, currently at $100,000. Um, it is recorded in the section of the budget. You can see the total there of 6.5 million and change, up about 1.7. And then again, the, um, the line by line details here by category um, total, capital budget increase from this current year to the proposed 24-25 is up about 109,000 um, or, or 1.7. The administrative portion of the budget, pieces that are included and recorded under this section of the budget include the book Board of Education, Central Administration, Finance, Auditing, Legal, BOCES Admin, Curriculum Development, Tax Collection, Personnel Services, Human Resource Support, Supervision of Schools, and all report related employee benefits. 3.9 million, um, up about 2.3. And again, um, the particular details, line by line, I will point out look across the first line, uh, $10,000 increase in the line that says Board of Education, please let me clarify what that is. Um, this is indicative of our platform, not my platform, your platform, of where we put our board information. So this is eDocs. Um, it's how all of our, for all your board information goes up. It's a platform where the meetings are recorded, um, the minutes, it's where the district clerk houses everything. There was a change in vendor and platform. So the majority of that $10,000 increase is relative to that platform change, okay? Um, a few g decreases along some of the line items as we go down. Uh, central services, $11,000 increase. Instructional admin for regular school, up about $51,000. And then um, employee benefits associated with the admin <coughs> section of the budget, up uh, just under $25,000. Total increase, $86,584, or 2.3%. So again, um, what does all of that mean? Where does the money really go? How does it get broken out? Pictoric, a picture, a picture, a chart. We used a lot of charts when we were <laughs> meeting and, um, and and working on contractual items. But you know, it, it's nice to kind of see where is it when you chart it out. And you can see the first two line items: salary and benefits. The two largest expenditures in our budget, um, which I would certainly expect them to be since we are a service industry. So about just under $24 million is our salary and benefits for the entire district. That's just under 63% of our budget is allocated to um, personnel services. Uh, we've got BOCES, 
expenses in here. We've got our debt service. We've got contractual materials and supplies, transfers, and equipment. Some of those items are very small. For example, um, the budget does support equipment both in buildings and grounds and in the instructional realm. Total $193,000 um, of equipment is included in the budget of, across multiple categories. So we'll take a look now, um, we've got our expenses, taking a look at the component breakouts, what's included in there, and now how do we support this. So again, state aid, as I talked about, we are projecting a 3% increase. We will lock that number in, hopefully, um, in the next week or so, if we get an actual budget from the governor with actual runs. So we are showing about a $456,000 increase. If you calculate that out, it is not 3%. It's not a 3% increase in between those two numbers. This is foundation aid increase. There are multiple categories of um, state aid. <clears throat> and it would be 3% on the foundation aid. Other revenue is up about $515,000. Um, couple things here. One indicative of looking at uh, some trends and in increasing those trends. When we budget, we don't just look at one year back, we look at two or three year back, years back, and also look at what else is going on. One of the big factors um, on the revenue side is interest rates. So we have not been able to generate interest in a really long time because the rates have been <coughs> so low. But um, with interest rates, being what they are and what the projection is for interest rates. Um, not all, but some of that 500,000 is indicative of really being able to draw, draw some additional revenue um, by making our money work for us. Appropriated fund balance. <clears throat> so I'm gonna come back to that one. I'm gonna jump down to the next line. The tax levy, um, again, that levy is a 2.3% increase. That is what our cap is. So our levy limit is 2.3. The projection is to increase the levy by 2.3% or $310,000. So when we do that, our budget uh, doesn't, doesn't balance. We don't have enough revenue to meet the expenses for the plans that have been put forth and looking to run for the next year. So it is balanced by the use of appropriated fund balance. We balanced the 23-24 budget with $1.2 million of appropriated fund balance and looking to balance with $1.4 um, million going into the 24-25 school year. So I will say, um, at this point, we have not utilized that savings. Right, so that appropriated fund balance is kind of our savings, right? We've built budgets and we've used appropriated fund balance to plug the hole to make sure that we can go forward. For multiple reasons, either expenses haven't come to full fruition of where we have budgeted them and or additional revenue has come in, we haven't had the need to use appropriated fund balance. As we're nearing the end of 23-24, um, I think we're going to be very close to possibly getting to that, that, that number where we would need to use appropriate fund balance, okay? So I say that because again, while we're budgeting for this year and we're talking about the 24, 25, this is long-term planning and we want to be certain that um, if we start dipping into fund balance and we're actually using it, we have a plan going forward because that's longevity and stability making sure that we have that savings available for the future, okay? Um, so with all of that said, we tag out our revenue at 38,132,742, which is our expense number. And therefore, we have um, built and presented a balanced budget. So kind of recapping, the budget change, expense change from year to year, 3.99% or $1,463,000 in change. Tax levy change, 2.3%, which is the same as our levy limit. 
There are a couple propositions, and I just want to recap this, and you'll hear me, unfortunately, um, talk about this again when we get to the budget hearing, but I think it's important that we say it a couple times. As we prepare for the budget vote, there will be four propositions this year. So the first proposition will be the expenditure budget, which again, the 38 million, 132 <coughs> change. The second proposition will be the proposition to allow the district to finance three additional buses. The board approved a resolution back in January to allow that to go onto the um, ballot. And then the third proposition is the approval to create and fund a capital reserve. So the board approved this resolution again to be put on the ballot um, back in March. And I just want to take a minute to talk about, remind people what that is. Um, as we move forward into the next capital project, we are using our current reserve to offset the cost. So when we are ready to bond, we will bond less, and that really pays for the local share. That reserve, once it is allocated to a project, is no longer allowable and available to us. So when we look, again, long-range planning, five years from now, when we're looking at another project and we're on cycle, if we don't have the ability to put funds that are available to us at the end of the year into a new capital reserve, we won't have the ability to offset the local share. So I think that you know we just want to talk about and really understand um, what that is and why it is so important to have a new reserve on the books um, and allow us to fund it if such funds are available to do so. Um, and then proposition number four, there are two board seats and those will also be on the ballot. Tracy, um, yes. I think you did skip a slide uh, yes. number 21. The Levy versus Red. With your highlighted Minnesota State. Yeah, I, yeah, it's for the, I did skip it. Okay. It was for the budget hearing. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> um, so again, just a reminder, we will <coughs> not have the use of the county machines this year. So they will be in quarantine, if you will, um, because of the presidential election. So when folks come in, you will cast your vote on a paper ballot, and you will put it in the ballot box. So there will not be a machine goes into the ballot box. Um, budget vote is Tuesday the 21st of May. And the vote is from 12 to 8. So again, um, and just say this now and I'll say it again when we do our budget hearing and we'll make sure that this information is widely um, visible in the calendar, the print calendar that gets printed in August of last year, the time says 12 to 9. The budget vote is 12 to 8. So it will be on all of the communications that go out related to the budget, but I just want to make sure that everybody here on the board is aware of that in case you get a question. Um, it's 12 to 8. Okay. So questions um, that I can answer for the board? <coughs> I got one clarification. Yeah. Really, for Sean on yours. Uh, when you mentioned the SRO position, um, you said we're getting two. Do you want to clarify a little bit of the cost versus what we have now versus what there will be going forward? Yeah, so the, the cost, this is different. It's a different arrangement, different yeah. model than what we've operated under. Um, so the. Uh, contract with Madison County will reflect essentially it's a 50-50 split um, so the, the county um, picks up the portion of it and the district picks up the other portion of it so the reason we say it's a, it's pretty close to the same cost of what it, we, we currently allocate in the budget uh, you know a line item that to, to cover that at this point one officer will be able to have two because of the uh, of the share, the cost share with the county. So I thought it was a pretty good 
uh, deal moving forward to be able to increase the, the police presence in the schools and um, nice that it's not it's not uh, at the expense of uh, of uh, raising our, our cost to provide that service. Thanks for clarifying. Yeah. Anyone else? Um, so then we go to resolve that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the board does hereby approve the 2024-2025 appropriation budget in the amount of $38,132,742. Motion? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the board does hereby approve the tax levy increase at 2.3%. Motion? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Building updates. We have a volunteer. Oh, Jenny is volunteer. <laughs> Um, okay, so April updates, I can't believe it's here, but um, on April 10th, Peterborough and Southside were very excited uh, to have an author visit, um, and it's a former employee. So Elizabeth Shefdick de la Roca was here. She's recently published her book, Sale the Snowman. So she came and spent the day with us, um, reading aloud to um, classes and then larger groups over at Southside. But the kids had a wonderful time meeting a real live author who actually was a teacher in our district. Um, so she signed copies of the book that um, the students brought in. So it was a really great experience that kind of wrapped up Canada's Go to Readings in our um, part one. Uh, we have a great turnout for parent-teacher conferences tonight. <coughs> Um, have a successful book fair, Scholastic Book Fair underway, um, thanks to our PTA. At Peterborough, we're looking forward to our flooring project over spring break next week. So we have four more classrooms being done. It's the center of Peterborough, so our two kindergarten classrooms in the middle downstairs, and then our two current pre-K classes on the second floor. So that's very exciting. And um, this time of year, our kiddos are just growing by leaps and bounds. You've heard me talk about Magical March an awful lot, but springtime is really, um, they're right in sync with nature and uh, just all the growth that we're seeing right now. And there was a kindergartner in Mrs. Moran's room who was so excited to come up to me last week when I was making my rounds. And he said, Ms. Carnahan, I have to tell you something, or can I tell you something, I think is how he started it. And he said, he had his little kit book, his reader, in his hand. And he said, I can read it in my brain now. <laughs> I don't need to use my mouth or say it out loud. And, I mean, it doesn't get better than that. So things are really clicking and coming together. We're working on tally marks and how that works in kindergarten. So there's, there's a lot of amazing things happening. But I got that quote um, and his excitement for that just really summed things up in that way. So. So she just said something about how students this time of year are growing leaps and bounds and um, since I've had this opportunity to be at the South Side really for the first time as a principal for a long duration, I would have to say something similar to that except not with necessarily academics but with behaviors. Okay, so in line with the season, right? Kids are getting excited, they're getting hay fever, they want to get out. So we're ramping up the behaviors, but at the same time, the kids are starting to learn and put into motion the coping strategies that we've been working with them on all year. Um, and I'm starting to see a lot of progress with some of our third graders. Um, and I can't, I'm so excited that they're going to stay in that building for another year as fourth graders, hopefully, to uh, continue working on those coping strategies to get through um, some of the tough times that they've had. It just made me think of that, so I didn't want to um, not say it. Um, so some other things that happened at Peterborough or at Southside this month, we had our second graders uh, go off to the bowling alley, uh, you know, which sounds like it's fun, but what they're really doing is reinforcing um, team teamwork and good sportsmanship and healthy competition as well as working on those math skills that you gotta add. 
uh, right? <laughs> and our third graders went to the most, um, along with probably half of Central New York also. Going there, so it was very busy. Our parents that came along as chaperones were probably by the end of the day thinking that they wish they had come, but we're very thankful that they did. Uh, the kids had a great time. Uh, along the, the science trend, I want to say thank you to um, the science teacher, the science department here that put together all of the really great activities and uh, also moving forward with those eclipse classes for the district. Um, and Mr. Sean Dwyer had come into some of our classes, Ms. Sklusky's in particular, to do uh, some science lessons revolving around the eclipse and the kids were just so excited about it. He was so excited because that's you know, who he is. So I want to thank you to the, the science uh, department. As you know, we took our math tests, or our ELA tests last week, right, the state tests. Um, so we're still wrapping that up at Robert Street and at the junior high tomorrow. So we have a few left um, in each building. We finished ours at Southside today. So uh, we're at, I'm happy to say, a 96.8% participation rate, which means wow. we made the asset accountability measure, right? So yay! Um, 91 out of 94 kids uh, eligible took the test, and um, we're still working out those numbers in 4-8, makeups and things like that, but the numbers are looking really good, 4-6 and 7. Um, we got some last minute opt-outs in 8 that, came, that boosted us, but um, anyways, we're looking good with ESSA accountability. And I think that's it because Jenny kind of talked about some of the other things. start off talking about a little bit about the ELA state testing, but you know, I think Karen um, summed it up. Uh, the only thing I would add to that is there's a lot of behind the scenes work in terms of um, the administration of the test. Can't even begin to tell you um, how much uh, uh, background um, organization of the tests and, and, and uh, the scoring, all that stuff. And so Karen has done an absolute outstanding job of not only her building, but also Robert Street and the junior high. So really big shout out to Karen with that. Um, and as well as uh, Ellen. Um, Ellen was really, uh, Ellen has a background also in uh, um, being a testing coordinator. So it really, uh, it really is very, very helpful. So um, enough, of, uh, enough of that. Uh, but thank you. Uh, the the next item is we had our movie night last night from 5:30 to 7:30, and that was really nice. It was um, we, uh, kids watched uh, the new Wonka movie, and um, and then we had popcorn, uh, chocolate, you know, the whole Wonka thing, and uh, <laughs> they seemed to really enjoy that, um, and uh, candy. So it was it was nice. Uh, pretty decent turnout, and uh, I think we would have had a better turnout if it wasn't such a nice day out. Uh, <laughs> today. Um, we also have an activity night coming up and uh, from 5.30 to 7 uh, in a couple of weeks, so we're looking forward to that. I think you remember maybe from my last presentation, we had the large game, so today, uh, next time around, it's going to be the small game uh, activities. You know, some of the more traditional, you know, um, Checkers, chess, and, um, Battleship Galactic, and, you know, and all, all that stuff. But uh, so we're going to have some academic-oriented games. We're also going to have some uh, fun games as, uh, for the kids as well and for the parents. Um, the last item that I had here is, you know, one a uh, little bit more of a serious note. Uh, and that is uh, we have a, an assembly tomorrow for our uh, sixth graders and um, on Friday for our fifth graders. And the topic is anti-bullying. And this has been an ongoing conversation not only at Robert Street, our district, nearby districts. So one of the things we're going to be, um, uh, with the help from Otis uh, Jennings, is we're going to have a couple of our outstanding SU women's uh, basketball players that are going to be here um, tomorrow morning. And so they're going to be talking about um, their experiences um, with, uh, with bullying. 
but more importantly, or just as importantly, how they got through it. And uh, you know, in, 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 in terms of developing hope and some of the coping strategies, and letting kids know if that is happening, you're not alone. Uh, making sure they tell someone and some resources to associate with it. I, I think it's awesome that you get that caliber student athletes to come down and work with our students because they share, they're being vulnerable, you know, and, and sharing some of their stories. And they're really heartfelt, you know, type of stories in terms of how they got through it. And uh, so, again, as you know, bullying isn't isolated to age, um, gender, um, socioeconomic background, ethnicity, it can affect anybody. And so I think um, when I say I'm looking forward to the presentation, it's it's always, you know, I, I mean it from, from the standpoint of I think it's necessary. And if you're wondering, maybe, maybe not, like why two months before the school ends would we be having it not earlier? We do anti-bullying measures throughout the year, but also, uh, my experience is this time of the year can be difficult, but not only for uh, for students because uh, they've they've been together for almost a year, and it's like a family. You know, you're together for so long, you start having um, disagreements, you start you know going through those the, that drama level of um, you know any family would. So I don't think any time of the year is a bad time to have a topic like that for kids. And um, so really looking forward to the uh, presentation. And again, um, we'll conclude with uh, fifth grade on, on Friday. So all right. Any questions? OK, thank you. Thank you. If I come closer, I think I'm further back up, so I thought I'd bring closer. Do you mind? Um, I hope not. Anyway, just a few things. A lot of good things going on. Um, we just put up, well, it's been up for a few weeks, or at least a week or so, the high honor and the honor rolls. 168 students in the high honor roll from 712, outstanding. The honor roll has 96 students. And our jump shot award, 34 students. That's the one I always keep thinking, like, it's just going to go down or whatever. We still have a solid number of students that gained at least five points in their average from the previous marking period to this marking period. So it's just outstanding. So really, really positive. And it continues to amaze me how much how, many, how much students really appreciate this recognition because they don't expect it many times. Uh, some of them have not, some of them don't receive awards on a regular basis. So of course, when you're called down, the most recent time you're called down for the principal's office, it doesn't always mean it's positive. And it is a very big positive. So very happy to have that award. And it's a great recognition um, for our students. So I'm going to continue that. It's been very positive. Um, certainly, our, just a note on the after school program, which ended a couple weeks ago, grades three. We had a third grade this year. 97 students signed up total. Uh, uh, just really, really solid. <coughs> very, very happy. I've said it before, but I'll say it again. Third grade just slid in perfectly. They just handled it all very well and moved on forward, so did a great job there. So look forward to assessing that, you know, going forward for for um, ways to strengthen that program, but very, very good and very positive about that. Um, grateful to Karen for the ELA testing as well as Kristen Fox, the work that they do to organize the scheduling and making sure modifications and accommodations are met. Very, very important, very important. And it's a lot of work, it's a lot of organization, it's a lot of movement of teachers and staff to cover things. So a lot of behind the scenes, as Mr. Sajan mentioned, is very, very true. And I wanted to, I just wanted to show you two, well, one's a program and one's like a flyer, but they're both related to the Lions Club. So Mr. Reset and I and, and Ms. Fox last night, and we also went to the March 25th. So on March 25th, the Lions Club recognized our students in the high, um, our, our students, the Victoria Valley our top students, and a nice dinner at the, at the, uh, the Theodore's. And then the st uh, last night, um, the Lions Club recognized our students at service awards. So 50 plus hours in the last year, or 100 plus. And some of ours, some of our students had 875 this year. I don't remember that was, but unbelievable. Wait, no, 875, right? 875. Outstanding. So. The students were just amazing, and, and we even had fourth graders. So it was just a wonderful example. And what is so good about, and it kind of 
really important, something I mentioned to students in the beginning here about kindness, and this was a, this is the theme of the Lions Club, is the recognition of kindness to others. And by making, taking the time to recognize our students where we can go into the community of Theodores and be, and, and be with the Lions Club and have them recognize our students of excellence, both academically and service. And by the way, they'll seem to cross sometimes. But what's really amazing is the, uh, what they represent, the Lions Club in our community, this importance of kindness to others, something that we need more than ever. And so it was a great uh, privilege to be there last night and a week or so ago for the other event, recognize, you know, having our students recognize for the great things they're doing by the Lions Club. So that's it. Thank you. Any comments, concerns? New business. Resolved, Canastota Central School District approves the 2024-2025 tentative administrative budget Madison and Ida Board of Cooperative Educational Services in the amount of $7,290,325 funded by $1,240,840 in expense by components plus Six million forty nine thousand four hundred and eighty five dollars in earned interest and miscellaneous revenue and shall out so allocate as a contingent expense its share of said administrative budget as apportioned in accordance with section nineteen fifty of the New York State Education Law. Motion? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? <coughs> Motion carried. Resolved. The Canastota Central School Board of Ed Education and authorizes the clerk to submit and certify its ballot in the name of Douglas Guston of the Canastota Central School District to serve as a member of the Madison and Ida Board of Cooperative Educational Services of the sole supervisory <laughs> district of Madison and Ida counties for the term of July 1st, 2024 through Ju June 30th, 2027 for the seat currently held by Mr. Douglas Guston, Canastota, New York. The ballot will be submitted to the clerk of the Madison and Ida Boses on April 17th, 2024. Motion? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Resolved, the Canastota Central School District Board of Education authorizes the clerk to submit and certify its ballot in the name of Chris Amon, Amon of the Hamilton Central School District to serve as a member of the Madison and Nina Board of Cooperative Educational Services of the sole supervisory district of Madison and Nina counties for the term of July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2027 for the secret, for the seat currently held by Mrs. Michelle Jacobson, Hamilton, New York. The ballot will be submitted to the clerk of Madison and Ida Boses on April 17th. Motion? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Resolved, the Canastota Central School District Board of Education authorizes the clerk to submit and certify its ballot in the name of Joseph Malfaletto of the Stockbridge Valley Central School District to serve as a member of the Madison and Ida Board of Cooperative Educational Services of the Seoul Supervisory District to serve as a member of the Madison and Ida counties for the term of July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2022 for the seat currently held by Joseph Monfaletto of Munsville, New York. The ballot will be submitted to the clerk of the Madison and Ida Boses on April 17th, 2024. Motion? Moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the board does hereby approve the senior trip May 31st to June 1st, 2024 at Six Flags in Queensbury, New York. Motion? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? Hope they get all their friends to go. <laughs> and you're going to come back and tell us all about it, right? Okay. <laughs> um, motion. Okay. 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the board does hereby approve the contract agreement between the Canastota Central Schools and the Canastota Teachers Association, July 1st, 2024 to June 30th, 2022. Motion? Second. Second. Any discussion? Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board does hereby adopt the 2023-2024 Real Property Tax Report Card is sub to be submitted to FED. Motion? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? <laughs> Motion carried. Eight. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board is hereby approved for Kenneth Lynch as the impartial hearing officer per attachment. Motion? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? Probably not. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board is hereby approve the independent contractor agreement for the provision of speech therapy services. This agreement made by and entered into on the 29th day of January 2024 by and between Thrive by Five here and after known as the agency in the Canastota Central School District here and after known as the facility for the 2023-2024 school year. Motion? So moved. Second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. School board member update. Um, I would say for seniors, just everyone's kind of picking their colleges, going through financial aid, just finalizing their future plans. And as far as the rest of the grades, just looking forward to the end of the school year, preparing for regents exams, but looking positive. Thank you. Committee report. Uh, shall we start with, I go to my list here. How about facilities? Facilities met, oh God, I'm trying to remember what was it? The yeah, end of March, we met, um, sat down with architects, tried to re starting to review um, building plans, um, architectural drawings, um, still in the early phases of that. Um, some of the big topics of conversation were the proposed all lines for the parking lot arrangements and the proposed plans for that. Um, still lots of things to finalize, um, but that's where we are currently working on that project so far. Finance? <coughs> Kathleen's not here. Scott, you and I, we've been preparing this, helping to prepare and listen to budget items, which Tracy and Sean presented tonight, so I don't, it's about what we've been doing, right, since, yeah, our, during our final. meeting was the 26th. So, yeah, March 26th was the last finance committee, which prepped us for today. Um, policy? Has that Safety? Uh, safety had a meeting scheduled, but they had to, we had to cancel it due to conflicts on both sides. Uh, academic? We are meeting tomorrow. Okay. And anything new on our mascot? No news. From, we're waiting a response from from our letter. State. Yeah, from our letter. So, no news. Yeah, maybe it's a good sign <coughs> that they haven't responded right away. <laughs> Again, it's the state, so sometimes it things <laughs> just like yes, we haven't got a budget. The, the budget moves <laughs> slowly. The, the mascot response is Sorry, also moving slowly. Sorry, we couldn't get that budget to so. you. We were working on this letter from Canastota. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Board comment period. Anybody go for it, Scott? Uh, I got something. I just wanted to say congratulations to the cast and crew of Finding Nemo Jr. Uh, one on Saturday. I was really impressed. It was a great show. Uh, highlight for me was the seagulls sprinting <laughs> up and down the aisles. Um, Love to see the, the younger kids getting involved and prepping them for future you know, productions. Uh, I think our community is really at its best when it comes together to support our kids. So on that note, thank you very much to our uh, 
parents and volunteers that were able to make that uh, a possibility. Um, so grateful that our students have such great, uh, such great people supporting them. Anyone else? Superintendent. So, well, a couple of the big things that we've talked about lately, um, obviously we addressed earlier with the um, the uh, very positive meetings about reconfiguration, uh, but also just to follow up on our pre-K presentation, uh, that obviously the letter went out uh, a couple of weeks ago to the community, but just to reiterate and to um, reinforce um, the most common question we probably got of, of uh, with registration, and that's going to be happening um, tomorrow and Thursday. So I don't know if there's anything else you want to add, but that was something I think it's been out and it's been publicized. But just to reiter reiterate that point, that um, that the pre-K registration is over uh, over the course of the next two days. Okay. Anything you want to add to that part? No, I don't think so. Okay. Um, and also just to to uh, I'd like to. <clears throat> really compliment um, the students and the staff on their efforts over the last really what week and a half or so um, relating to the ELA assessments it is a big undertaking it's been an area of emphasis um, we really are, are, um, are focused on trying to put our best foot forward um, with you know um, demonstrating all the things that our, our students are learning in the classroom um, it's a count it's a, important because it's it's it is one of the many measures not the only measure but one of the many measures of learning and it's also a measure of accountability um, in the eyes of the state and so for the, all, you know all of those reasons it's um, it's an important thing and something that people have really um, taken put a lot of work into and, and taken seriously um, the math assessments we have a little bit of a break and then we'll be in the state math assessments uh, the week of I believe it's the May 6th um, uh, we'll be back into it again um, I would also uh, congratulate as mr. Schultz did our uh, community service uh, award winners um, it's been a tradition for uh, quite a few years uh, it's certainly it's been happening since I've been here and it, it started long before um, of recognizing students it's really important because it's about um, again recognizing students who hold high expectations for themselves they, they are about elevating their community and in so doing they're also helping themselves they're they're learning about themselves of what um, maybe they're interested in or, or good at and so we want to continue that very positive um, uh, you know tradition and we appreciate uh, the support of, of the Lions Club so great job and congratulations to those students um, some other things we're getting into the season where some of, we're starting to have some culminating events and experiences and you know earlier we talked a little bit about um, you know we're talking about things that are you know like state assessments and those are a, sort of a, a necessary part of the, you know maybe not something that excites people uh, we also like to balance that out with talking about things that kids are excited about. So along with things like the new eSports uh, experiences that our, our students have been able to work on a couple of days a week, um, brand new this year. But some of the culminating activities like the uh, just la uh, the end of, I believe, Friday, students were participating in the Syracuse Crunch. Um, end of your event it's the second year we've been able to do that where our students are sort of learning over the course of the year and then embedded in the operation of the crunch they go to their game family members oftentimes have participated in that as well so that's a pretty cool and it's a unique thing um, because really that's not a common thing you know um, and I believe I know last year we were and I think we still might be the only district that is is involved with that program or certainly if, if not the only one one of the one of the few who has that opportunity um, coming up also on our ambassador program which has been become really a signature program tied to the local um, uh, really signature event that happens in Canastota and uh, we have a lot of kids I know who are scheduled to again be involved with that program as we're getting into the final phases of preparation for this coming year so um, and that so congratulations to all those kids and, and uh, we're 
pleased to see those programs that are now what were sort of new, now they're becoming established. And it's just a part of the way we do business. Um, and then to follow up on a, a point uh, Mr. Um, Sajdog made earlier, the, the emphasis on, um, and, and encouraging students to hold high standards for themselves, important, but also um, to encourage respect, right? Because this is also the time of year um, where, um, while some very positive things are happening, it's also the time of the year, right, that you know, frustrations sometimes be, uh, boil over. And you'll have tension between students or, or adults or, and it's important, I think, the message that uh, he was referring to, the emphasis on not just uh, an occasional assembly. We'd, we're, we need to do more than that, we are doing more than that. that those assemblies are nice reminders that we could hear from people, maybe in some cases, who are well known or have uh, experiences uh, outside of the typical school setting that they can bring in and, and help us learn from but the ongoing efforts are going to be important. So when we do things, you know, for example, that Mr. Schultz has been talking about a lot, our look at um, the code of conduct, right? Well, that's a piece of the puzzle. What things um, do we do to enforce accountability in good behavior? So that's an important piece of the puzzle that we need everyone focused on across the board. And then there are pieces of how do we provide support. We talked a lot in the budget uh, presentation about things like um, the um, Satellite Mental Health Office. Uh, one thing that we didn't really talk about a lot specifically, but is a central part of our budget, is some of the things that have come in in recent years that didn't exist. For example, an, uh, it enhanced levels of, um, of uh, social work services, um, the reintroduction of a, psychology, a psychologist position that came back uh, a couple of years ago, um, an increase in, um, in guidance counselor support. Those are things that we need to continue to remember. Um, those are things that didn't exist a couple of years ago. And while they come in, while we have those additional federal funds, that's been the real challenge for a lot of districts of how do you how are you able to maintain some of those things? Look at the long-term health and interests of the district. How do you preserve some of those things that were introduced that we've seen value to? So that's why we continue to ask the hard questions about how are we as efficient as possible in spending our money wisely because it's a priority to maintain those areas that have we've been able to add. We don't want to see them go away. And so we'll continue to ask those questions of how do we leverage our funding? How do we have that balance that we talked about at the beginning of the presentation between fiscal accountability and excellent programming and support for students? So that'll be continue to be a priority. But again, uh, just to, to, to a final point on what Mr. Sajdog was um, talking about, I think that's the foundational piece that we continue to have to work on in that if we're going to be the district that we really want to be, need to be, you know, we're going to be a lot better by sort of putting our best thoughts, energy, positivity forward in a, in a, and try to find common ground. Um, and that goes for everybody. And certainly we want to um, reinforce that with our students. And we want to set good examples of that, that we're about trying to support each other and as we get into this tough part of the year, which everybody's on, you know, I know Avery was running in when she was coming to the awards last night because she's got a million things on her schedule, right? And everybody's, it's hectic time of the year. So it's gonna be more important than ever that we really try to make sure we're supporting people. Um, and, and I'm confident we'll do that if, we, if our priority is making the school a positive place and the best place it can be. So um, we'll look forward to those, those updates to see how we're progressing on both the accountability piece and the um, support uh, piece as well. That's what I hear. Personnel recommendations, all appointments are pending clearance on fingerprinting, retirement and resignations. 
Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the board does hereby accept Tanya Emerson's irrevocable letter of resignation as an elementary teacher of the effective June 30th, 2024. Motion? A motion. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the board does hereby approve Jeffrey Aquino as a permanent bus driver at $24.89 an hour at $5.25 hours per day with a 26-week probationary period effective March 27, 2024. Motion? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the board does hereby appoint Ann Van Epps as a permanent food service helper at $16.78 an hour, four hours a day, with a 26-week probationary period, effective April 17th, 2024. Motion? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the board does hereby appoint the following substitutes. Susan Marcus, as a certified substitute teacher at $125 a day, effective April 17th, 2024. Motion? You can do both. Oh, can do them both. Michael Cunningham, as a substitute bus driver at $24.44 an hour, effective April 17th, 2024. Motion? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Coaching resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the board does hereby accept John Tyler's resignation as the modified boys track coach for the 2024 spring season. Motion? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the board does hereby appoint Austin Ames as an unpaid baseball coach for the 2024 spring season. Motion? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the board does hereby appoint Jacob Smith as the boys modified track coach for the 2024 spring season step five at $3,314. Motion? So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the board does hereby appoint John Michael Grasso as the assistant golf coach for the 2024 spring season, step three at $1,862. Motion? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried. Other. Resolved that upon the recommendation of superintendent of schools, the board does hereby accept the recommendation to discontinue an appointment of a food service helper pursuant to section 71 of the civil service law. Motion? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Two. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the board does hereby approve Brian Dwyer's request for an unpaid day leave for April 19th, 2024. Motion? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Public comment period. I don't know about the public. <laughs> Hello? Guess not. Uh, future date. Special board meeting April 30th, uh, 2024, 630 here. Uh, can I have a motion to go into executive session for negotiations and contracts? Personnel. Personnel, yes. Motion? Second. Okay, we got all that. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? And we will not be coming out, correct? So let's see, it's 838. Here's my little chart. 